So it's on. Okay. <clears throat> As Tim was saying, one of the chaps working on the Halifax in the next year said that the average hourly survival rate on the Halifax was 80 hours. And I said that one of the chaps I work with in the control tower, Art Barker, he did a complete tour on these Halifax. And he survived. survived. How, what's a complete tour? How many hours? Uh, well, I don't know. A, a tour is so, uh, they may go 10 hours tonight, they may go 12 hours tomorrow night, they may go two hours the next night. So there's no, but it's a tour. Uh -huh. and if you survive the tours, which were 80, I believe, that the average was 80 tours, they, uh, they sent you back to Canada. Oh. So he'd have to survive like 80 missions. And survived it. What's it? What? what what's the DFC? With Distinguished today? Flying Cross. Dad went to school with him. He grew he up in a, the village with him. An observer. And uh, his crew were killed. And he flew. <coughs> he flew the bomb back and landed it. For that in first day. I don't know what the second uh, DFC was for. What's his name, Dad? John Johnny, Johnny Corrigan. From Ottawa. I got pictures of all these guys. Mm -hmm. Well, he lived beside Dad when he was growing up. Mm -hmm. And I got the, uh, the write up of our squadron right from the lab. It's just a, a synopsis. John, right? But I got pages on stuff. Like where, where did the slogan going down come from? Do you well, know? When they were on an, uh, on an operation, maybe four aircraft, they're flying along. And before they started their dive, the leader would say, going down. Mm -hmm. And everybody would. So that's what got that, uh, yeah. <coughs> that uh, motto, going down. And, and Ken, you didn't get any choice. Eh? Well, I mean, you enlisted and they, they said, this is where you're going. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you didn't what, you didn't choose this regiment because you liked the men. No, no, no way. <laughs> like the wild the red cougar, yeah. 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 No, there was no uh, you had no choice. Yeah. You joined the Air Force and they sent you on your training. And after the training they sent you to a different place and I I was lucky I went to Rocco, yeah. the fourteenth fighter. That was before that one. Is 14th fighter on there? 14th fighter? No, oh, I don't know. These are all 400 numbers. Yeah. It, it was it's... probably converted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we went to 14th fighter at Rock Up and then we went to uh, Vancouver. And then from Vancouver, we went to Alaska. And Alaska, we went over six. Yeah, we that Weren't you in Quebec at one point, Dad? Yeah, but I was in Quebec for Manning Depot. But a lot of them were just left. We went to Cartier, New Brunswick, New Brunswick, Penfield Ridge. And then we came back to St. Thomas. Went through the training in St. Thomas and then went into 14th Fighter. 14th Fighter, how long were you in Annette Island up in Alaska? 14 months. 14 months. And from there you went where? Overseas. That uh, actually went right from Annette Island right overseas. To where though overseas? Like where would you have landed? Bournemouth. Bournemouth. And from That's there? That's where the RCAF assembled in Bournemouth. And uh, then you, you were transferred to the different units when you got over there. Something else. So this is where you were transferred yeah. to this unit, yeah. you mean? That, that, this. Uh, 
438 was all part of that, but it was all evolved eventually into, into this type of organization, which, which was very interesting because it was more or less a continuity of everything that I was on. So, and when you were told you were going to be in this particular squadron, did you go and report to a commanding officer? What? Uh, no. The uh, five or six guys were said, okay, Blackburn and Jones, and I report to such a desk down in Bournemouth, and you walked up and you Blackburn, and the guy had my name there. Uh huh. You're going to. Uh, not 4 fighter, but it was on the 438 squadron. And I didn't know what 438 squadron was anymore than the new man in the moon. Yeah. So who was who was in charge of it? Who was the commander? Over there? Yeah. Dad, uh, where did you were in Scotland for a short time? Hmm? You were in Scotland for a short time. Yeah. Well, this was second half. Second Tactical Air Force, and to train the people for Second Tactical Air Force, all these squadrons were shipped to different parts of the country, and one of them was there, another one was Digby, and another one was Burn, England, and all these places. And as I, I used to say when they were kids, we used to go to bed at night in a tent, and at two in the morning, okay, we're moving. <laughs> Really? Yeah. You just never knew what was going to happen one That's to exactly the next. it, yeah. yeah. It's hard to live that way. Well, I mean, it's good training. Yeah. How many months were you in training before you hit the Normandy beach? What beach? The beach that you landed on in Normandy. Well, D-Day. D-Day was the 6th of June. We landed on the... Uh, 16th of June, 10 days. 10 days after D-Day, we landed on Gold Beach. And when you say you landed on Gold Beach, it was in the barge. You see the picture? <laughs> there was no welcoming band? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But how, how long was that from when you started? How long was your landing at the D-Day beach? Well, we, it was an overnight trip from England to, to the beach. Uh -huh. And then after we got to the beach, we went up on the, the landing craft, the front went down, and we just got up. But no shooting out of the surrounding beaches. Right. What Laurie means, where did you go from there? Oh, you mean to... Uh, no, I meant from when you when you got in, when you started working in the Air Force, oh, right? Wow. Until you were in the beach for a year? Oh, three oh. years. Three. three years? Yeah. 42 to 45. No, I was in the Air Force in 41. Oh, 41. Four, Four years. years. <laughs> That's a long time. Four years. Mm -hmm. A long time. Wow. What were some of the cities that you went to from landing at Gold Beach? Where did you go? What was your route? Um, was it Gold we went to uh, Cruley, Cruley, France, and then we went to Amiens, and then we went to. Um, oh, come back to me. Oh, I've forgotten the names of all. Through Belgium? Well, Belgium, Brussels, or the Brussels, that was where we really got a, a reception in Brussels. Oh, you People are in the streets. Come on, we're about a bottle of wine. Oh, nice. Yeah, great, great. Yeah. Well, we, we had a good time in Brussels. Yeah. Well, that's what you need, a little bit of break in between all that stuff, mm -hmm. eh? Or there's still but then again, you know, they're, they're in a truck. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't first class travel by right. any means. Oh, okay. Yeah, but just the humanity of it, you know, yeah. to be... Accepted in and offered wine, and that's really lovely. Oh, yeah. In the middle of a war, you know. Flowers and everything. Oh, Just yeah. like you see in the movies, you know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And they were happy to see you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> you go back. <laughs> go back to well, see we're it. Back. We were we back. We were back three years it. ago. Yeah. Yeah, Brussels is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, we're in Brussels, <coughs> we're in France, Brussels, uh, Holland, 
then select.